today's episode, we're going to review the Arc Captain MiG-200 inverter welder and a spool gun. Stay tuned. All right, welcome back to Fab and Adventures, guys. On today's episode, we're gonna be going through this Arc Captain uh, MiG-200 welder. Relatively inexpensive and simple to use. Hopefully, we shall see. We're also gonna try out their uh, spool gun here and see how it welds with aluminum. Now, if you guys have followed my channel, uh, you know this channel's revolved around fabrication and 4x4 building, uh, building jet boats and outdoor adventures and whatnot. And lately I've been getting into quite a few reviews and I only take products that pertain to my channel and to the viewers and obviously welding and plasma cutting and stuff like that pertains to fabrication channels. So this here is a relatively inexpensive welder. And these guys are fairly new to the market, our captain. Uh, so we're gonna see how well it does. And I'm thinking if you clicked on this video, you're interested in this welder. So we're gonna go through it through a beginner's aspect, how easy it is to learn to weld, how easy it is to set up and weld with. So let's see how intuitive the machine is and whatnot. And you know, I never do unboxing, so I'm just gonna rip this apart off camera and then I'll show you once I've got everything laid out. All right, here we go. First thing I noticed. Very, very Chinese-esque, uh, which to a lot of North Americans, uh, that initial feeling when you pull it out of the box, uh, it kind of, gives you a bad taste in the mouth. Uh, plastics and whatnot on here feel very non-quality, honestly. This is my first impressions of this machine. Rattled when I was pulling it out of the box. This is the door where the wire goes in, but this is the other side. Very rattly. The Yes Welder I have, I just tested out, does not rattle like that. But that doesn't mean that this machine isn't gonna weld great and do what it's supposed to do. And at the price point, kind of what can you expect, right? So let's, uh, let's just quickly go through the stuff that I peeled out. We got the MIG gun. Nice feeling. I like the feel of it. The cable's fairly heavy. The Euro style connector uh, feels good, looks good. The gun, yeah, the gun actually feels Chinese, China. Chinese-esque, if you will. Yeah, I just dropped that and I didn't break nothing, so that's good. Let's uh, have a look-see. Jesus. Mm. I don't even know how this hood comes off. Oh, there we go. Okay, so if you spin this, what would be clockwise, it comes off easier clockwise it goes on. If you try and do it counterclockwise, it does not come off. If you try and straight pull, it does not come off. But if you turn it clockwise and pull, it comes off. Let's try and get you a close-up of that. Turn it counterclockwise, comes off relatively easy. Push it counterclockwise, comes off. But if you try and straight pull, it does not come off. If you try and counterclockwise, it does not come off. So that's interesting. I've Never had to deal with this style of nozzle. And uh, to be honest, I don't know what to think about it. All right, so that was the MIG gun. Let's have a look at our... stick welding clamp stinger. Yeah, I'm not a stick welder guy, so... I mean, it's got good spring pressure, but... Some guys on some of the other reviews I've been watching, they like it. They think it's, it's uh, good quality. I don't know what to think of it because I'm just, I'm not a stick welder guy. 
but I'm sure it'll do the job. Let's have a look at our typical light weight, light duty ground clamp. That's got decent spring pressure. Yeah, it looks like copper wire in there. I, it, I mean, it'll probably do the job just like any other one does for what length of time, who knows. And the machine is obviously 220, 110. The, the cord coming off the machine is 220. You put it into a 220 converter to 110 if you want to run 110. I don't typically weld on 110 because I have 220 power in my shop in multiple places. So there's really no need for 110 for myself unless you're out welding uh, out in the field or something like that. The other thing that I find curious is they give you a, the gas hose for gas welding, but they don't give you a regulator. I think if they're going to that point of giving you a hose and it feels like a nice rubber hose, not just some cheap little nylon hose. Uh, but I think if they're going to that point of giving you a nice rubber uh, gas hose, they may as well throw a darn uh, regulator in it for you. Uh, they give you regulators on, on these uh, Chinese plasma cutters, so why not send a regulator uh, with the welder? All right, so we get a series of different wheels and the collets for your tips and another nozzle. So we have uh, two tips, probably 030 and 035. Yes, so you get two tips, 030, 035, drop them in there. You get another nozzle, which is actually a fairly small nozzle when you compare it to the Yes Welder machine. Uh, you get a hard to read 0.9 V roller. And they don't have the standard conversion of what 0.9 or 0.8 is, whether it's 035 or 030. But they put on both sides 0 0.8, 0 0.8 KU roller for aluminum, V roller for steel, and the knurled roller probably for running flux core. And then they give you another uh, ferrule or whatever you want to call it for your MIG tips to go into. So that's an all right starting little package. It'll get you welding for a little bit. Uh, let's have a look at the spool gun. Yeah, this feels pretty good. Let's just move that aside here and let's have a look at what we got here. Initial thoughts. It has the Euro style uh, gun, obviously that goes with the machine and then your four pin plug that goes uh, behind this knob here for your spool gun. The cable itself, that feels pretty good. Everything here feels pretty solid. Let's have a look at this. Oh yeah, simple enough to get your spool in there. And then this here, this is at least nice. It looks like it's a toolless to get this cover off. Yeah, here we go. To get your wire in there past your little feed roller and into your nozzle. And it looks like they use the exact same nozzle as your MIG gun does. So that's, that's pretty good. I like that. So this looks pretty decent. It's toolless and you can actually get your fingers in there to kind of help feed that wire through because I've seen in the past where some of them don't allow you to get in there to help guide. You have to just hope that it pushes it through and hope that it pushes, uh, gets through your liner here. Uh, spool gun feels pretty good. We shall see how it welds. 
typically, I'm not a big fan of spool guns, but they are handy in some places, uh, especially if you got to get into a real weird position that's not uh, tight spaced uh, because, you know, obviously they're quite bulky. But your other option is to get a graphene liner for your MIG gun uh, like the Yes Welder has, and then you can... Uh, you can get into quite a bit tighter spaces with your MIG gun than you can with a spool gun, but you don't want to kink the whip while you're running aluminum because that can cost you some bird nests up in here when it's trying to push aluminum through 12 feet of whip. Okay, so I just finished measuring the length of all three components, your stick, uh, your ground, and your MIG whip. All three of them are exactly the same length within a few inches, which is actually surprising. Typically your ground cable is way too short uh, or whatever, or they don't match. So, so that's good. Then you at least have a similar range that you can weld. You can, you can put your ground clamp there, you can weld right there, but it's only 10 feet, so it's pretty darn short. The main power cable comes in at just short of six feet, which is actually above average for these Chinese machines. Typically you get about five feet of power cable. Okay, so enough of that. Let's plug this sucker in and I have not read the manual or nothing. We're gonna just go and see how intuitive this machine is and how easy it is to weld. Although I have quite a bit of MIG welding experience. Um, so I'll kind of be a little biased as to be able to, how to figure this out. Okay, as I'm getting ready to uh, hook everything up here. First thing I notice right off the get-go is this plug here appears to be an aluminum plug with maybe a, some sort of a, a gold looking coating. It's not a solid brass unit. I don't think it looks like aluminum inside of there as far as I'm concerned. That is definitely one spot they cheaped out. This is not a solid brass unit I would say. I do like these Euro style connections compared to the old style uh, MIG welder I've got over there. It's just simple, plug it in. Okay, now that we've got our gas line hooked up, our power on, our other connections here, let's go ahead and turn it on. Back switch feels okay. All right. Okay, so I got you in nice and close here. So let's just see how intuitive it is. Obviously, SYN would be your synergic settings. Yeah, the SYN comes up there and it gives you the settings. So this here, I have no idea. Like for us, maybe in Europe, Europe or something or in Asia, this makes sense, but this, uh, Looking at the button tells you nothing on what it actually does. But I've watched videos and I do know that it means 2T, 4T, and spot weld. So this is not intuitive. It should say 2T there instead of one arrow down, one arrow up. And then you have a double-ended, two double-ended arrows, and then three dots. Not intuitive, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, for... I have no idea what this is. Okay, let's go over to the arrow here and see. M and volt. M and I would guess the V is volts. The M. Not quite sure. Mode. Okay, so mode, that obviously tells you you're going to put yourself in stick welding, in TIG welding, in MIG. This should say spool because that's MIG. So you have two MIGs, MIG showing a spool gun, MIG showing your regular nozzle. So kind of intuitive, but they could have put SPL for spool gun or something just to take a little bit of the guesswork out of it. This button here, no idea. 
doesn't seem to do anything. Hard and soft, standard, not real intuitive. Amps, it's in inches per minute, it looks like, which is good because the, the videos I've been watching have all been metric and these were meters per uh, second or whatever, meters per minute or whatever, which in North America, that is not gonna make much sense to anybody. And then your voltage. Maximum of 26 volts, minimum of 11. Wire speed, maximum of 14, minimum of two. That's not real intuitive. It doesn't say inductance, though it does have a little symbol down here that maybe means inductance and what hard and soft actually means. So if you're a beginner, this is not gonna make no sense to you at all. Still no idea what that is. <laughs> oh, this is not intuitive. <clears throat> Looks like I'm gonna have to read the manual. Which, I mean, if you're new to welding, you're gonna read the manual anyhow. Synergic. Oh, okay. So when you're in the synergic mode, this <laughs> whatever button symbol on this button means is changing basically what you gas you're using or what what you're welding I guess Fe straight CO2 gas uh, mix gas and then if you're welding with flux core wire you don't need no gas uh, CRNI I'm guessing that's stainless and a, what looks like AL MIG, so I'm guessing aluminum MIG. Yeah, not super intuitive, I tell you. All right, let's have a look at the side. Pretty, pretty cheap feeling. <laughs> they grounded the lid actually. Oh, here's a little, not really sure what uh, that is. It was just rolling around free in there. I'm guessing it was some sort of a blind nut for this screw coming through here. <laughs> All right, well, uh, my initial viewing of this is pretty cheaply made. Um, and I've got experience with a few inverter machines like my old Magnum there from KMS Tools and a Yes Welder over there, and a few other machines that I've welded with in welding shops, and this one. And this one is definitely by far the cheapest feeling, like all this, this whole, the whole thing is moving. If you can see that, I'm moving the whole thing with just the end of this Euro style plug. This whole box here is moving in this panel. Uh, not, not, not real, not real impressive, but again, let's put some wire in the sucker and read the manual and uh, try and weld with it. Okay. <laughs> okay. So here's actually a cool feature and I didn't really even notice it at first, but it has a light, <laughs> a service light in here. So I guess, I mean, some welding shops are pretty dark. My shop's lit pretty good. Um, but it has a, has a service light for this. That's actually pretty cool. If you were outdoors, like some farmers, I mean, back in the day on the farm, uh, you'd be combining or something like that. And you would typically break something in the middle of the night. And you could, in theory, have a little machine like this and a decent sized generator. And with flex core wire, you could go out and you could weld that part back together. And this little light here, would just help you in putting your wire in here, feeding it in uh, into your liner here and getting your tension set right. So that's actually a pretty cool little feature. It apparently looks like it stays on probably until you shut the power off, I'm guessing, because I don't see any sort of switch on here that turns this light on and off. 
Yeah. There we go. So the light just went out. Cool. So if you're new to MIG welding and you just throw your roll on there and tighten this up, to me, that's too loose. And you need to actually tighten this screw in here or this nut in here to give it more back tension. And they don't give you a tool to reach in there with. There, there's a little bit, it's not quite so freewheely backwards, so you're not gonna end up with hopefully a rat nest. Yeah, it appears like it's missing the guide. <laughs> it's missing the guide. Oh boy. It's missing the guide to guide your wire in there. Not cool. And who knows where that piece is. It could have rattled itself in there and could be shorting out on something as we turn it on. Uh, there should be a guide in here. I could steal one out of my yes welder, uh, maybe. Oh. There's something rattling around in there. Oh, I see it. I'm gonna get a magnet and see if I can get it out of there. There it is. Okay. If you guys are new to welding, this possibly could have shorted this machine down if you didn't know that that was supposed to be in there. I'm gonna bring you in close. Okay, so where this piece actually goes, is it's supposed to go in here and be tightened down with a screwdriver. And then your wire is supposed to be guided through there, through the tip or through your gun liner, and then you would close that down. And this guides your wire, so when your wire is spooling back and forth on your spool here, that it doesn't just pull off your roller here. This guide needs to guide your wire straight through. So <clears throat> let's just, before we get too far, let's make sure we put the right roller on. This is an O9V and that's an O. Eight, so you have a double-sided, I think, 09 is 035, or 0.9 is for 035. Yeah, so it shows you it here in the chart here. Okay. All right, so that's actually putting up some red flags for me. Uh, finding stuff rattling around inside a machine like this, especially when metal parts can get around to the electronics in there. Um, not cool, our captain. And I get it, things can get missed, but uh, I've already found a few things I don't like about this machine. Not real intuitive on the screen. Um, I mean, we've gone through that already. I'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt and we're gonna do some welding with it because I'm sure not all the machines have loose parts rolling around in them, hopefully not. Um, but we're gonna finish setting this machine up and trying it out. I haven't even got to the point of trying to weld with it and I've been finding this sort of stuff already. So uh, bear with me. Now, if, if you watched my channel at all, you know that when I do reviews, I am straightforward. If they're a piece of crap, I'll tell you, Go watch this video up here where I shoot down a drone because it's a piece of crap and it glitched out on me and I had to 
take it out of the air before it crashed into one of my vehicles. I'm straightforward. If it's junk, I'll tell you. So continue watching this video to see if this thing is actually half decent. Okay. Let's see, where's the manual down in? Oh, here we go. Here's the manual. <laughs> no way. <laughs> I feel like I'm a kid eating my morning cereal again. <laughs> they, <laughs> they give you a prize in the box. They give you stickers. Some cheesy ARC Captain stickers. What are, are we... Eight years old? Holy crap. Check this out. I mean, cool slash cheesy <laughs> at the same time. Oh boy. I suppose I could stick those on my helmet, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> oh boy. Let's get back to the show. <laughs> Okay, well, let's, uh, let's try her out. Let's see how simple it is. Turn it on. Turn some gas on here. And as far as I know, there's no gas test to purge the line of gas. <clears throat> which uh, would be a nice feature, but whatever. The other thing I see already for a synergic system, if you're green as grass to welding, you have no idea where to start. Now, my old Magnum machine has a synergic setting. That thing's probably eight years old and it's welded a ton of things. And you go in there, and you put your gas you're using, your wire that you're using, the thickness of wire, what thickness of steel, and it puts the setting in, and the settings are perfect. Same as the Yes Welder that I have, and that review you can see up here. Same thing, put your gas in, your wire size, the thickness of your steel, it figures it all out, away you go. This Synergic system is different. You gotta go old school, you gotta go inside the side panel, you got to grab, grab your glasses to be able to read and see. I want to weld eighth inch metal. All right, where, where are we? This thing is not super easy to, to read either. And all they're showing you is 19 gauge, 14 gauge, 11 gauge, 8 gauge, and 6 ga <laughs> gauge. Uh, what's 8 gauge and what's 6 gauge? It doesn't go into eighth inch, quarter inch, three sixteenths, three eighths, half inch, none of that stuff. So when you're new, when you're new to welding, and especially if you're in the States uh, where you use the standard system, eighth inch, quarter inch, uh, three eighths, half inch sort of thing, this is gonna be confusing. I grew up in Canada and I grew up learning both sides, metric and standard, but metric is not what I use. I use standard. I, when I do everything other than my laser stuff, it's all in standard. Uh, so this is going to take me a little bit to figure out and I've been welding for a while. So we're just going to play. Let's, let's put it on its eight gauge metal setting and weld some eighth inch steel here and see what happens. Actually, eighth inch would be 11 gauge. So let's go with 11 gauge. So what we have to do here first off is find the thickness of our steel, material thickness, 19 gauge, 14 gauge, 11 gauge. We're gonna go with 11 gauge. We're using 035 wire. And it's saying that we want 23.7 volts and 10 wire speed. So when we welded that eighth inch, we looked at the wrong settings. We were looking at straight CO2 gas. We actually need to have the argon CO2 mix and eighth inch should be set at 19.7 and nine on the wire. 
And we'll see how that welds. That sounds good. Now that looks really nice. That welds really nice on the proper setting. Does some nice welding. Impressed with that, impressed with that. Let's try uh, 3 16 Okay, so I actually had to search because I don't know what gauge 3 16 is and that's what we're gonna weld next. And it says 3 16 is seven gauge. And then beyond that, we have no idea what quarter inch and whatnot's gonna be, but uh, seven gauge. So let's set the machine up for seven gauge and go from there. So 3 16 was seven gauge, this only gives us eight gauge, so we're gonna go with 21.3 and 11.3, we'll set for eight gauge. Pretty hot for that sort of weld. I had this chunk V'd out and welded it and uh, it welded fine. See how it welds. A little much wire, I would say. I would drop that back. Still nice weld though. A little flatter, mine ended up being a little less wire in it. Three decent welds, not bad. Three sixteenths, welds nice. All right, so they don't actually have a setting in here. Six gauge is not even close to quarter inch. Um, they don't have a setting for three eighths. They don't have a setting for half inch or anything, anything even slightly higher than three sixteenths or just above three sixteenths, there's no more settings. So if your target buyers are beginner welders, you need to have a better diagram on that door there so that these guys can figure it out. I mean, I'll be able to go in here and play with the voltage and wire speed and get it figured out relatively quick, but a beginner is gonna struggle with that and fight and not be happy with this machine. And a real synergic machine, like my old Magnum or the Yes Welder, you can just go in there, select your gas, select your wire thickness, and select your thickness of steel, half inch, three eighths, whatever, three sixteenths, quarter inch, and it's bang on and you don't have to fiddle with it other than maybe minor adjustments if you're welding overhead or doing an uphand or a downhand or whatever, make minor adjustments to your voltage and wire speed. Whereas this, so far, I mean, I could put it on a synergic setting and try and weld some thick steel and just keep turning it up and turning it up and turning it up and to see if it works and maybe I'll try that, but uh, uh, not real intuitive. I'm not impressed with that, but let's carry on. Let's let's just see how she welds with the thicker steel I've got a few pieces of quarter inch here that we can That we can try and weld with we'll set this thing up for the hottest that they show in the panel And 25 and 10 What does it go up to it only goes up to 26 so 25 25 and 10 seems odd. Oh, there we go. That fan finally cooled down. Okay, let's see if this will weld quarter inch. We need two quarter inch pieces. Here we go.
It sounds hot. It sounds hot enough to do the job. Well, while it welded it, it could have used a little more wire speed. Bring it up here and show you. It did a nice weld on quarter inch. Nothing wrong with that. Let's go thicker. Sucker up to 26 and we'll give it, what's the maximum wire is 14. So we'll go 26 and 12 and we'll try some 3 8 That sounds pretty close. Let's try it. use just a smidge and more wire. Three-eighths plate here. It's a pretty decent weld, nice looking weld. Fairly clean, not much spatter. Uh, so that's, that's pretty good. So okay, we see it can weld steel uh, relatively good. Let's go find some aluminum. Attach this. Be a little, a little bit finicky to set up, but not too bad. Okay, then all we have to do is we go over to uh, which one was it? This one? No. We select spool gun. There comes our wire. And we should be set up basically to try and weld some aluminum. There we go, a little spattery, not bad, not awesome. And you can see I started out cold and had to keep cranking up voltage, voltage, voltage till you get your voltage close and then start playing with your wire speed till you get your wire speed dialed in. And I'm still not perfect, but it's not bad. And that's eighth inch. Let's try some of that quarter. Just go for easy figuring. 21 volts, 12 on the wire. See how it feels. Pretty good. Right there, we'll just give her a little more voltage. Try it again, see if it smooths it out a little bit. go that welded pretty good 21 5 and 12 
obviously we started out with not a bad guess on our settings and then we changed it we upped our voltage a half a volt and uh, smoothed that weld right out pretty decent looking welds not bad that's quarter inch welded to three sixteenths we're gonna bump this because we're going to weld three eighths so let's go try and 24 volts and 13 on the wire speed see how that works see how it sounds right here need more wire it's, it's decent There you go. Nice weld. So there you can see 3 8 aluminum weld. It's pretty darn good. It started getting hot here in the end and we could have used a little more wire right at the last inch there or so or a little less voltage possibly. I might have been running a smidge hot but uh, pretty good 3 8 weld. I would not complain with that. That's uh, pretty nice with a spool gun. So here we are on MIG 035 wire selected on Synergic. So when it's not in Synergic, it's separate here. You control your voltage and your wire speed. When you select Synergic, then it gives you the option to uh, change your gas, obviously. <clears throat> it gives you it gives you the option to change your wire thicknesses. And here it's got actually selected 040. A lot of these little welders don't have an 040 option for steel. For aluminum they will, but not for steel, typically. Uh, this one has an 040 option, but it didn't come with any uh, tips for 040. So we'll just put her up to 035. It's got an 023, an 030, 035, and 040 option. We're going to do 035 because that's what we have. All right, here's our Synergic settings. Uh, basically, it's controlled by amperage by the looks of it. So they don't really explain to you in the manual on how to play with this Synergic setting. Uh, but when you weld aluminum, especially with a TIG, it's typically one amp per thousandths of an inch. So say eighth inch aluminum is 125 thou you would give yourself 125 amps, roughly, give or take, and you'd be in the ballpark. So we're gonna try that theory with steel with the Synergic. Set this at 125. Try and weld this eighth inch like this. And you need different amperages for different welds. If you're welding like that, you know, if you're butt welding, you need a different amperage, you know, so. But we're gonna try this theory so at 125 amps, it's telling you 117.2 volts and you have the option to go minus three volts and plus three volts. And that's about all it gives you. So we're gonna start it at the base in the zero. 125 amps, see how it welds. Play with that a little bit and possibly play with the inductance to see if uh, we can change the way it welds some. So let's try it. I would say that's cold. So let's give her 130. Try a little weld and see what happens. Oh, 
I would consider that a bit cold, but that's pushing. Let's try pulling like I typically do. This was my pushing weld and good, but I would consider it a smidge cold. And then I pulled and uh, weld looks, well, pretty nice. I wouldn't complain about that. Let's go thicker. And now it would be uh, 187, so we'll give her 180. That uh, can't be right, because what this thing maxes out at. Let's just try 140 amps. Definitely too cold. Let's go with 150. That sounds pretty good. It's a little bit too much wire. So I would bump that voltage up. So the Synergic settings are a bit cold, I would say, for this type of weld. Uh, but once I upped my voltage, uh, it did pretty good. But you're st you still got to play with it. So it's, it's not set and forget. You don't just, uh, like my other welders, you just set in your, your gas, your wire diameter, and the thickness of your steel, and you weld, and it's pretty well perfect if it isn't perfect. This, you still got a set. You still got a monkey with it. So, uh, I'm not sold on their Synergic setting. There you can see the first weld, and it's not bad. Here's the second weld. And then after I upped the voltage two volts, we upped the voltage two volts here. Not bad. And I bumped it up to three volts for this one. And uh, it's a pretty decent weld. Unfortunately, with their Synergic settings, we still end up playing. So I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just guess at 165. And we'll go with what would be a baseline be 20 volts and 165. So if we look in their panel over here, they would have said 28 volts and 15 on the wire speed. So this is all different. I don't know if I like this Synergic setting, but let's, uh, let's play with it. Let's see. That's decent, that's pretty decent, but again, I'm guessing. But uh, pretty decent weld. That's quarter inch steel with a Synergic setting at 165. I wouldn't really call this a Synergic setting. Okay, so let's wrap up this video. What do I think of the machine? Well, it welds pretty good. It does uh, really good welds for the money. I think the machine is worth it. Uh, I personally don't find it real intuitive to use and not as easy to use as some of the other ones I've welded with. Their Synergic uh, system, I don't like it. It's not as smooth and easy to and 
and intuitive to use like the Yes Welder or even my old Magnum over there. I mean, those ones, like I said multiple times in the video, you just put in your wire speed to gas you're using the thickness of the steel or the aluminum and it figures the rest of it out and it's bang on. The Yes Welder, they're still working on their aluminum parameters, but you can update the welder. So as soon as they get their parameters updated, uh, you can just download the update onto a card, put it in the machine and upload it and there you are and it's and it's dialed in. The steel settings are dialed. So this machine right now is selling on Amazon.ca here in Canada for 543 bucks and personally I think that's a bit much for what you're getting with the machine and the quality of it. Uh, I mean like you've seen in the beginning of the video I found loose parts rattling around in there and it's not super intuitive. I think there's probably some better options out there at that price range. Uh, I haven't done the research to see, but I know that DP200 Yes Welder that I have is a way more capable machine and it's not much more money. Uh, if it were me, I would spend the extra 100 or 200 bucks even to get the Yes Welder machine. This one, uh, if you're strapped for cash, it definitely welds good. Welds aluminum really nice with the spool gun. Uh, I mean, I can't complain about its welding that it does. Um, our captain is giving some pretty massive discounts from what I understand on a Black Friday deals. And uh, I, I think if you were gonna buy this machine, I would wait for some of those major sales and buy it then. And one other thing that they do offer is a two year warranty, which is pretty good, but I also worry about how good the warranty is gonna be, you know, when it comes time to needing warranty. Uh, I've had other products in the past that have killer warranty, like super good warranty um, for outdoor hunting type items. And uh, across the counter, if it breaks, you go across the counter and uh, they give you a new one and they do break non-stop so you're always using the warranty which is is nice but it's an inconvenience if you're on a you know 10-day backpack hunt and you're way back in the country and that piece of equipment fails on you that warranty doesn't do you no good so I mean there's that if you're if this is your only welder and and you're making money with it somehow uh, and it fails on you and you need warranty, you know, there you are. So I don't put a whole lot of faith in any warranties, really. You just buy the best quality you can and take your chances, and that's the way it is. Uh, the bonus is to this machine, and though pretty well all inverter machines, is it does uh, flux core, does solid gas welding, it does MIG welding, it does TIG welding, you can do uh, stick welding, and you can uh, run a spool gun with it. So it's, it, it covers a wide range of uh, welding capabilities that you might want to use. And it does them all really well once you dial it in. Like the old school machines, you had to dial it in and, and, uh, and they welded great. So same thing as this, once you get it dialed in, it welds pretty awesome. So that's my thoughts on the machine. And I thank Art Captain for letting me try it out. Uh, I think it needs some further uh, R&D on it to make it a, a lot better machine. So if you guys are liking this sort of content, make sure you subscribe, share, like these videos, give me a thumbs up, catch you on the next episode.